Let's pray for Japan this week, okay? We have Japanese cars. We have Japanese things. Let's remember to pray for Japan. I want to see God move in a mighty way in Japan, okay? By the way, my name is Danny Borchers. I just got hired as the new prayer pastor at Plymouth Covenant. Just moved here from Portland, Oregon. I'm Donnie's identical twin. (laughs) Donnie has a lot more hair than I do. Actually, I walked in here about 17 years ago. I was here when we almost closed the doors because we couldn't pay the bills. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to be here. I get to watch God move. I get to watch God change lives because he's good all the time. Amen? Amen. And I get to talk about walking in the Spirit, which is one of my favorite things to do. I love the Holy Spirit's timing. Last month, somebody asked me to come to their school and teach for two hours on the Holy Spirit. So I got two hours worth of stuff, and Dan says I have 27 minutes and 30 seconds. He's timing me. And then I have these friends up in the balcony from Teen Challenge. Hey, guys. Come on. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit a lot at Teen Challenge. And about December 31st, I decided I was going to read the book of Acts during the month of January for the whole month. I do crazy things like that. In the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit is mentioned only 55 times. So if you want to read about how to walk in the Spirit, read the book of Acts again. Those early Christians, they were nuts. They were crazy for Jesus. None of them had gone to Bible school. None of them had a Bible study. They just had encountered Jesus, believed in who he was, And did crazy things. And sometimes we forget that what happened in the book of Acts is still normal for today. Amen? That's what what Christians do is what happened in the book of Acts. In fact, we're still in the book of Acts today. We're in chapter 2017. Does that make sense? We're still in the book of Acts. Pastor Dan gave me a, a thought that I liked. He goes, Donnie, share how you have personally learned to lean upon Holy Spirit. Lean into Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. By the way, he's talking all the time. He's talking all the time. Be filled with, bear fruit, and respond to the Holy Spirit. So that's what I'm going to do today. My goal is not to teach you more things. We know enough things about Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit, but to give you some tools that you would come to know him in a better way and then have actual and real Holy Spirit experiences in your life. How many want that? I want my life to be changed because I met with Holy Spirit. As you continue to grow in your walk, and remember, each one of us has a different walk. So if you're comparing yourself to somebody else's walk, you can probably quit. It just doesn't work. You're you. You're in a different journey. We have enough theology I have enough theology to choke a horse, to be honest. We simply need more real-life experiences and encounters because those change our lives. Those things change our lives when we encounter the living God. We need to practice. I'm learning how to keep this simple. Um, We've done a really good job of complicating Christianity. We've made a really good job of making a list of things that we have to do. So sometimes I just come show up. I listen well. Then I have to trust him. And you know what the hardest thing is? Then I got to obey. I got to do what he asked me to do. That can get scary. And join him. See, he's already working. We just get to join him. We get the privilege of working with God. He really doesn't need us, but he loves to join us. He loves us to partner with him. Because he's always good and he's much smarter than you and I. Amen? He's much smarter. Here's another thought I thought about. What I choose to believe about God, what I choose to believe about Jesus, what I choose to believe about Holy Spirit, and what I choose to believe about myself will change my life. Think about that one. Get a big picture of all those things. It will change your life. Um... It'll shape and influence my thought life. On my, I, You know how Pastor Bob walks in the Spirit? He walks in the Spirit like this. 
all over the stage. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> Remember, too, dear ones, as we walk in the Spirit, Christianity is not simply a set of rules and teachings. Guess what? It's a person to follow. It's a person to walk with. Amen? It's a person to follow. These 12 guys, and they were quite ordinary. Can you imagine having to deal with those 12 guys on a daily basis? Jesus had to put up with them. He's got to put up with us, too. That's a lot of work. They walked with Jesus. They watched him heal the sick. They actually watched him raise people from the dead. They watched him cast out demons. They watched him play with kids. They watched him teach God's wisdom and demonstrate God's power. They not only learned about God, they experienced him in a real, real way. How many want more of that kind of life? I do. It's fun. So you and I will have moments in the next day, next week. I hope it's tomorrow. We're going to stand here at a crossroads going, what's next? We might have a hundred questions for God. Hey, by the way, keep asking questions. Don't you hate it when your kids keep asking you questions? They keep pestering you till you get an answer. I like to pester God till I get an answer. He loves to ask. He loves p- people who are dependable, excuse me, are dependent and realize they're not smart enough without him. Keep asking him questions. It's a good trait. He loves hungry and dependent people. And rather than answering them one by one, Jesus and Holy Spirit might just say, hey, it's time to put on your shoes. It's time to step out of the road and walk with me in a new way. And I believe as we begin this new walk with him, Holy Spirit and Jesus will begin to answer your questions, and dear ones, you will discover far more than you even knew how to ask. I've been doing this for 36 years, and I'm just, I know this much. I want to know this much more, and he's faithful. How many like walking with your best friend? Isn't walking fun? I grew up out there in Oregon. I get to hike in the mountains. I love trail. I love hiking. I love walking. And I love walking with my best friend. His name is Randy because I trust him. I can have conversations with Randy about life. So one of my goals here is to talk about how you can walk with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't this charismatic thing over in the corner that only super spiritual people know. He's your friend. He enjoys walking with you. In fact, he gets quite a kick out of you. He gets quite a kick out of us. So, some things to talk about this morning is who is this thing we call Holy Spirit? What does Holy Spirit do? How to walk daily with the Holy Spirit? Well, I'm not ready. I'm not spiritual enough. Well, yes, you are. You can start today. I'm learning how to do this because it's scary. It's fun, it's full of surprises, it's full of divine appointments. I got a whole bunch of divine appointments up in the balcony because now I have a job at Teen Challenge, and what a gift. Is there a formula? Probably not. Sometimes there is. Sometimes, and the things I'm talking about today are for me too because I'm just learning this stuff because I've not even come close to who I want to be in Christ Jesus yet. We're going to talk a little bit about the fruits of the Spirit, how to get those and how to keep those. So I'm going to start with one of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite guys. His name is Graham Cook, and he's a prophet, he's a teacher, and he's kind of on the edge. He says this, the Holy Spirit loves you. He's excited about you. He knows everything that's on God's heart for you personally. He knows the intention of the Father for each one of us. He listens to, he agrees with, and he prays the same thing as the Lord Jesus Christ prays over you. He knows the prayers of Jesus for each one of us. He's familiar with the intercession of Christ for you. He knows what the Father's going to do, and guess what? The Holy Spirit gets the job of making all that stuff happen. You know, he loves his job. Holy Spirit loves his job, and he loves you. Well, I'm not good enough. Get over yourself. On your worst day, he loves you. On your most stupid day, he loves you. 
He has a passion for you. We need to pick up on what that passion feels like and tastes like. Because any passion you have will come to you through your relationship with Holy Spirit. All your excitement comes from him. Here's one of my favorites. You can be massively encouraged all the time because of his presence. People think I'm, people think I'm always encouraged. Guess what I am? Because of him. You know what? After 36 years, he's never failed me once. He's faithful. So, who is Holy Spirit? Who is Holy Spirit? We know there's one God manifested in three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they're perfect. I have, a, I have a funny picture of being in heaven with all three of them. Wouldn't it be fun just to sit and talk with them? I think they get quite a kick out of you and I. They have a sense of humor about what's going on down here. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's not some religious concept that only crazy, charismatic people believe. He's a person. He's the power of God. He's the breath of God. He's the wind of God. Amen? He keeps me above ground. We as Christians know he's a person. And my friends, he's as real as the ground I'm standing on. I believe that. I walk in that. John 16, 5 through 10. We're going to have a slide. Oh, by the way, let me back up a little bit. We're on this thing called the walk. Pastor Dan gave us chapter one of just what it's like to walk with God. Pastor Randy did a great job last week about how prayer fits into your walk. Now I get to talk about walking in the Spirit with the Spirit. It says here in the Bible, Jesus is talking to those 12 friends. Again, not the sharpest knives on the tree. He says, I'm going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are kind of sad because I have said these things. But Jesus says, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the Holy Spirit, the advocate, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. What a gift. When he comes, here's some things he will do. He will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me about righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. I love reading the book of John, all the the promises he makes about what the Holy Spirit's going to do in our lives. So what does the Holy Spirit do now that he's here, now that he's real? He simply came to walk alongside of us and be our helper. Anybody else need a helper besides me? Oh, I thought you guys had it all figured out. He came to teach. He came to comfort. He came to show us and reveal Jesus. He came to give us wonderful and supernatural gifts. He came to heal. He actually believes that nothing is impossible. I like to hang out with people who believe that nothing is impossible. I believe he's very enthusiastic. I believe he's very, very enthusiastic. Dan thinks I'm pretty enthusiastic. I love being enthusiastic because it's fun. All three of them together in heaven, they just want us to know this morning that each one of you are on their hearts. Each one of you has a special place in their hearts this morning. You do. It's his job to convict people of sin. How many have tried to convict people of sin? I've done that really well. It's not our job. His judgment is always good. It's not our job to try to convict somebody or judge somebody. His conviction is perfect. His judgment is perfect. But it's absolutely okay to ask the Holy Spirit to hover around somebody. I like that term. I've asked him to hover around my boys to keep them safe. Have somebody get their attention and let the Holy Spirit do the convicting. His job is to constantly reveal more of Jesus to each of us. I love finding more things about who Jesus is. Sometimes I forget. (laughs) What happened up there? He went to the cross for me. I forget. I don't want to forget that. That changed my life. (sighs) 
The Holy Spirit teaches us from the scriptures. Read it again and ask him to show you something new every day. I thought about this this morning. If you're having trouble reading your Bible, I've got a great idea. Read your Bible. Pick it up. Find one of your favorite things to read. Read it for like 30 days in a row. Get a piece of paper and say, hey, I'm going to write down five new things that I just learned from the scriptures. That's an assignment, by the way. I grade on the curve, so you're okay. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you something new from the Bible. I was, um, I was in uh, getting a complete, complete body scan for cancer in July, and I'm laying there for five hours, and I just had this brilliant thought. Holy Spirit said, Donnie, I want you to read Colossians every day for 30 days. That's how he talks to me. So I did. I love reading certain things for 30 days in a row. Just one of the things that works for me. The Bible is our training manual, and I personally hired the Holy Spirit to be my personal trainer this year to get me into shape. He's good at that. The Holy Spirit's job is to keep us abiding in Christ. Does anybody know what abide means? To stay put. If you wander away, it's okay to come back because he'll grab you, he'll hold you. He loves when you abide in him. So when you wander, turn around and come back. And only when we stay, only when we abide in Christ, only when we walk with him, the Bible says we will bear much fruit. So when you wander, and much more fruit. I know each one of us wants to be more fruitful. Each one of us wants to feel like we've made an impact. Don't you? I do. It's fun. Scripture teaches us that before the foundation of the world, you were placed in Christ. That's the first love of God. Then the Bible also teaches us that we have Christ in us as our hope of glory. So now, let's figure this one out. If I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, that, my friends, is the best, the biggest, and the safest place to be. Just a thought. The Holy Spirit is very brilliant and very creative. I love to watch artists work. So if you think about your favorite book, your favorite worship song, your favorite CD, your favorite art, guess who helped all those people do that? He's called the Holy Spirit. He's very creative. Who wrote the Bible? Not some guys with their own thought. The Holy Spirit told them to write the Bible. You know, anybody else have a battle in their mind with thoughts? I do. This is where the enemy comes. He comes right between our eyes. So, Holy Spirit, will you give me some new thoughts about this life? Holy Spirit, will you give me a new perspective? Holy Spirit, will you give me the mind of Christ again? I want that. Ask him to renew your brain. Fill it with positive truths. So when you're tired of your own thought life, I got a great idea. Repent and ask for a new one. Ask him for a heavenly perspective on whatever situation, whatever circumstance is bothering you. And remember, we sang, he's in the waiting. He's in the process with you. He knows exactly what you're going through. And um, Holy Spirit's not here to fix us. The Holy Spirit is not here to fix us. Jesus completely fixed everything about you at Calvary. Guys up there, all your addictions, all the things you've been gone through got nailed to the tree, amen? Why do we let the enemy bring that stuff up? Stop trying to manage your sin and walk in a new way as God sees you. He might give you a new prayer language. He might give you the gift of speaking in tongues. I'm not going to talk a lot about that. I love my prayer language. The Holy Spirit's job is increasing in us continuously. He never stops. It's where the Bible talks about being filled because the Holy Spirit likes to make more room inside of you. He starts to deal with all the stuff that really doesn't belong to you anymore. Right, guys? You're no longer there. You're in a new place. He's just cleaning house. He's spring cleaning you. He's getting rid of all the old stuff. Somewhere in our lives today, there's a yard sale going on. Anybody got some stuff they want to give away or sell? I do. It never stops. It's like a, he just keeps peeling away stuff. He just shows us new stuff he wants to get rid of. 
The Holy Spirit is making room for new stuff in each one of our lives. So as he gets rid of the old stuff, you have to get filled up with the Holy Spirit in that place that he just made new. Because if you don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, guess what else might fill you up? Not good stuff. Not good stuff. The Father is absolutely consumed by life. When the Father looks at you, he no longer sees what's wrong with you because he sees Jesus in you, and the Father absolutely loves his Son inside of you. Did you know that? All of heaven loves Jesus inside of you. He, now, he might see what's missing in your present circumstance, and he's really smart at providing the missing pieces. If you've got something that you're struggling with, ask him to fix it. Ask him to give you something new. I think he will. So let's say you just happen to have a problem with lust. He's going to give you purity instead. He's not going to beat you up over lust. He's going to go, I want to give you something new. Maybe it's anxiety. He wants to give you peace. He wants to trade. He loves to remodel us one room at a time. You know what the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for him to shame you. It's impossible for him to condemn you. Those two things come from the pit of hell. The Holy Spirit might convict you. The Holy Spirit might, he, he just bugs me. He goes, Donnie, when are you going to understand this one? He pokes at me till I get it. And he loves to give us a new idea of a way to handle a situation. Let me show you a different way to handle this relationship. Let me show you a different way to handle how you do ministry. He's brilliant. And I love... That in the conversations that I have with Holy Spirit, he's constantly inviting me to know him. Not to know more about him, but to personally know him in a friendship. I get to hear his voice. I get to talk with him. I get to walk with him. It's an ongoing conversation that the Holy Spirit encourages us all to have through prayer. How many just enjoyed worship this morning? What I do, I get downloads during worship as why he, he shows me things during worship. Through prayer, through reading, through study, and through fellowship. There's so many ways to walk with the Holy Spirit. So if, you, if you're looking for an upgrade, a breakthrough in one area of your life, focus on that one area and ask the Holy Spirit how he wants to help you in that area. So how do we walk with God in the Spirit? How do we do that? That's a great question, isn't it? My mom said, Donnie, I have a four-word sermon for you. Love God and love people. I like that. I'm done now with my sermon. Did I tell you my mom was 91 and she loved Jesus? She served him for 50 years. When she died, she had nine quilts that she hadn't finished. The church ladies finished her nine quilts and we took them to a home for battered women. I learned some things from my mother about walking with God. So he's not looking for a clinging bride, but he's always looking for a walking partner. God is always looking for new walking partners. From the very beginning, God had a relationship with Adam and Eve. He found them. Gee, they were walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They messed up and they tried to hide. How'd that work for them? Anybody else try to hide from God? It doesn't work. God created man for the enjoyment of a walking relationship that involved companionship. It involved dialogue, intimacy, joint decision-making, mutual delight, and shared dominion. God longs to walk with each one of us in a new way. That's why his arms of grace have been pulling you into a closer walk. I'm sensing a lot of you want a closer walk, and he's just going, here I am. You know how many times he says in the New Testament, come to me? Oh, but I got to run away because I'm not good enough. No, Jesus says, come to me. On your worst day, I want you to come to me. No matter how broken you are, I want you to come to me. Amen? He loves broken and vulnerable people because I'm one of them. I love walking with Jesus. I love riding my bike with Jesus and Holy Spirit. We talk the whole time, nonstop. The walk not only makes exercise fun, it also deepens our friendship. Jesus went on these walks with these 12 guys for three years. And he still likes to walk with us today. I was riding my bike around Lake Calhoun one day. 
by myself and I was up, I was worshiping and doing this and just singing and having fun. And these two women rode by me and said, you're having too much fun riding alone. I'm going, I'm not riding alone. <laughs> I'm riding with my friend. Um, one of the keys to walking with the Spirit and in the Spirit and by the Spirit is what I call my quiet place, my secret place. It's not always the destination, but it's one of the catalysts for a closer walk with Him. It is designed of God to establish us in a very intimate relationship with Him, then is walked out through the course of our days and our everyday lives. See, the goal we're after is an everyday walk of unbroken communion with our Lord and friend. Well, I only have to do that on Sundays. I just go to church for a couple hours. Then the rest of the week, I don't have to mess with it. He loves to walk with you all day, every day. I absolutely believe, after 36 years, that my most valuable time I have with him is in the quiet place. So I invest in that time. I protect that time. I'm intentional about that time. I can now take more and greater risks and walk with him in the public place because of my time in the quiet place. Does that make sense? If I get filled up in the morning, I'm more ready to walk with him. I love taking risks. It's fun. I practice daily disciplines. If that sounds kind of like tough, I've turned those disciplines into what I call delights. I've turned this into fun. I have prayer, I have worship, I have journaling. Yes, for those who are waiting for my book, I will write my book and publish it. I have a rocking chair that I bought over 40 years ago in Bend, Oregon, where I got saved from drug addiction. Hey, amen, guys? Yeah. I simply sit in my rocking chair in the morning. I, I sit and go, guess who shows up? The Father shows up, Jesus shows up, and the Holy Spirit shows up. I love talking with them. I receive instructions and directions from them. And when I don't get specific details, I simply go knowing they will direct my steps. One of my favorite questions in the morning, hey, God, what are we going to do today? Show me the one person I need to chat with today. Show me that one person who needs a prayer. Show me that. Or I might ask him, hey, what kind of mood are you guys in today? They're always in a good mood. Spend time in the morning. I have many stories to tell you about simple connections, about walking in the Spirit, prayers, encouragements, blessings, prophetic words he's given me to share over the past couple of years. I have many new friends and connections because I walk by faith. It's because I listened, because I prayed, because I trusted, and when I obeyed. I love it when I spend some time with people and they start crying. <laughs> They go, Donnie, how did you know that I needed that today? How did you know I needed that prayer today? How did you know that I needed that good word today? Well, I said, the Holy Spirit told me, and he does. You know, well, you know who else got up early in the morning? Come on. Yeah. Now, if Jesus had to get up in the morning and get on his face and ask God for help, maybe I do. He had a full agenda, and he had to hang out with those 12 guys. I said, I can just hear him. Hey, God, I really need help with Peter again today. <laughs> He's a handful. They're a handful, so are we. And I believe Jesus' success as a man, he loved his father. His father loved him, but he also had to spend that time with him to get ready for what God had him to do. So what's some challenges? One of my challenges my own walk with God, it's very, very easy for me to fall into the trap of working so hard for Jesus that I forget to work with him. His burden is easy. This, he says it's supposed to be easy. He operated from a place of rest. Jesus desires intimacy more than works. Jesus desires who we are instead of what we do. Does that make sense? He says again, I'm the vine. You guys got to hang out with me. You got to be stuck on me if you're going to bear fruit. Whatever works we do must be the fruit of our intimacy with him. They come from that place. A lot of you are busy. A lot of you have families. I'm in a place, I live alone. I'm, I have a lot of time to do this. I'm going to encourage you to carve out some extra time. And you can start tomorrow, assignment number two. Lord, help us to know not 
about you. We desire to know you. But how about the dark times, Donnie? How about when I'm feeling alone? I'm feeling crushed. I'm feeling sad. I just don't want to do this. You are safer with him in the dark than you are without him in the sunshine. You're safer with him when you don't feel like it. Paul says, Galatians 5.16, I think we have a slide. Ah, walk in the spirit, no, back one, and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So I say, walk by the spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The flesh, by the way, is the expression the Bible uses for the dwelling place of everything that opposes God. All the yucky stuff in our life is called the flesh. Anybody else struggle with their flesh? I do. It's pretty messy. We have a mind. We have an ego. It's a command sender. It sends out countless signals and actions. The signals and actions from this command center all around about taking care of me because I'm more important than anybody else. Amen? We get honor. We get favor. I actually exalt myself at others' expense. This is the desires of the flesh, which has endless demands and expectations. The flesh never stops. We can usually control our flesh to a degree, at least when the impulses of flesh do no benefit our ego. Our human nature is simply subject to the powers of the flesh. And the negative characteristics we inherited through generations present themselves, we often hear, well, I'm just human. That's just what I do but at least I'm not as bad as the other guy. That's our flesh. Paul said in the Bible, you know, if it's in the Bible, it's true. If it's in the Bible, it's true. I believe it. If you walk in the Spirit, you no longer need to fulfill these lusts. You begin to think and act differently than other people in their situations in life. You know what one of the attacks of the enemy is? I can't walk with God because I'm not good enough. I can't walk with God because I'm not as spiritual as Donnie. I can't walk with God because I'm not pretty enough. I can't walk with God. The enemy's always going to tell you you're not good enough. God's always going to tell you you're good enough. God's always going to tell you that. So don't listen to those lies about not who you're not. Realize who you are in Christ Jesus and go for it. Walk, when you walk, you go forward. Um, It's okay to stop thinking about your past life. Right, guys? Yeah. To walk in the Spirit, you first need to receive the Spirit. And the Spirit, of course, is Holy Spirit. He's a real force. He's not just something out there. He's as real as when a crane lifts a shipping container from the boat to the pier. And when you get this power in your life, a new day begins. Starts today, by the way. A new, it's the start of a new and immensely interesting chapter in your life. And yes, my friends, that starts this morning. Our Father ne- never gets tired of starting again with us. He never gets tired of new starts. But God, Donnie, you don't know what I've been through. He does. He never gets tired of you starting again. And the Holy Spirit is a very, very good author, and he's a screenwriter. He wants to help you write the next chapter in your story. Guess who gets to be the star? You do. Don't let one of the enemies of your past life be the star. You get to be the star of the next chapter in your life that the Holy Spirit's going to write. He'll bring to remembrance Holy Scripture. He gives us power. We all meet adversity. We meet troubles. We meet trials. Anybody gone through troubles and trials? We all have. What's happening now around the world is kind of sad. We, we lose a job, a friend's offended us, we go through this stuff. What happens if you walk in the Spirit during the middle of that? Jesus says that the Spirit will bring to remembrance all the things that he said to you. You don't have to worry about tomorrow anymore. There's two days that I don't worry about anymore. Guess what they are? Yesterday and tomorrow. You got it. Today's enough, and the Bible says that he would supply every one of my needs today. He doesn't say, you know what, when the Bible says all, you know what it means? All. All. I love when he says all.
Walking in the Spirit means being obedient to the Spirit. Oh, my goodness. I have to do this, Father? You want me to do what? Obedience is, is tough. It's better than sacrifice. Being tempted is not the same as sinning. But in temptation, you come to a point of decision. But what does Holy Spirit say? One of the, you know what I'm mad about God? Sometimes he gave us free will. Which means... Want me to be honest? We're all one decision away from being stupid. Amen? (laughs) Isn't it? Not my will, but thine be done. I I wish it was that simple. But I have this free will, so I get to make choices. So I trust the Holy Spirit to help me make good choices. Do not be overcome by the evil, but overcome evil with good. When and if we walk in the Spirit, we begin to overcome temptation. You begin to resolve situations in a new way, in a positive way, and it gives you great joy. Isn't victory fun when we have those breakthroughs? So let's start thinking. Let's start walking like we're God's sons and daughters. Let's start seeing ourselves the way God sees us. Let's start understanding that our place in works, in our neighborhoods, in our churches, with our friends, we are called to be sons and daughters. We are called to be a saint for our family, for our community, even here at Plymouth, for the place where we work. You have a unique perspective that you've never had before. You, have an, you think differently. You have a different language. You can bring things from heaven into the earth. You can bring heavenly stuff because you have that power and that anointing because Christ is in you. Our thinking becomes transformed as we learn to think from God's heart. I often ask God what's on his heart. It's a great question. He'll share that with you. Fruits of the Spirit, fruits of the walk. Read Galatians 5.22, it says. You know, I usually don't do this, but let's stand up and read these together because you guys have been sitting way too long. Go ahead. But... Amen. Um, how much time? I've got a couple minutes left. When we walk, go, oh, you can sit down. <laughs> By walking in the Spirit, something incredible happens. The Bible called the fruits of the Spirit, they begin to grow in our life. We become more stable. We develop the ability to create peace around us. Love frees us from our thought life. Faithfulness becomes a part of our personality. We begin to become trustworthy in what we do and say. We have a new nature. We have a new DNA. This makes us a winner. All these qualities grow by walking in the Spirit, and you begin to move to the sunny side of life. We become contagious Christians. I used to be addicted to drugs. I like to be addicted to Jesus. I want to be so contagious that people want to hang out with me. We become dangerous to the enemy. We become the walking good news. I love this thought. The fruit of the Spirit is a more powerful force against the enemy than the gifts are. You can defeat the enemy by living in the love of God. You can tire him out by your joy. You can depress him with your peace. You can overwhelm him with your patience. You can frustrate him with kindness. I love that. So just by being everything that you are for God, you are automatically against the enemy. The enemy can't put fear on you if you're basking in the love of God because perfect love casts out fear. Um, Walking with the Spirit, I have a story to tell. A couple years ago, I was in St. Paul. I was doing some outreach on the city streets. And I looked across the street, and there was five guys there. There were hoods. And God said, Donnie, those are your five guys. I go, you're kidding me. And one of the guys with me was brave. The third guy's going, no way I'm going over there. So I walked up to these five guys. I walked right, hey guys, tell me your dreams. Not you need Jesus, not you need to go to church. We had 45 minutes with those five guys because they trusted us. You know what happened? One of them got saved. One of them recommitted his life to the Lord. One of them got his back healed and one of them quit drinking. I was scared, but it was fun. See, the closer you get to God... 
the more sensitive you are to his voice and to the nuances of his heart. Sometimes you feel things. Sometimes you see things. Some people are feelers. Some are seers. Some are listeners. You get to practice all three at this point. I love to practice. I need to be asked to be filled with those every day. I need a daily Pentecost, a daily refilling, and a daily refreshing. Let's just close your eyes right now. Put your hand on your heart and ask God for two of those fruits. Ask God to fill you up with two of those fruits. Thank you. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. My friends, it's that simple. Ask. Here's, I got two more stories before I close. There's three families here at Plymouth Covenant that I've come to love. It was on a Sunday morning. Each one of them made a mistake of sitting too close to me. <laughs> and in each case, I felt something was going on with those families. Something, they were kind of restless. I felt a little bit of burden. So I approached each one of them, welcomed them to Plymouth Covenant, Ask if I could pray for them and just encouraged all three of them to go, Donnie, how did you know we just got here? How did you know we were looking for a new church? How did you know that we were just restless? Guess what? All three of them have been here for two or three years. All three of them are plugged in and enjoying the Lord. That's not, that's not me. That's God working through me. So, And you know who you are. I love you dearly. The last story I want to tell, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the comforter. He loves to comfort. He gives us more boldness and a new courage when we need it. I've needed him. What happens when no one else shows up, he will. He's faithful. Sometimes he'll bring me a big warm quilt and simply wrap his arms around me and tell me that he loves me. So about seven years ago, I lived a couple blocks up the street in a big empty house. My wife was leaving me and filing for divorce. My son was at going through drug treatment. It's hard to put your 17-year-old kid into drug treatment. My father had died. My sister had died, and my best friend had died. I'm going, okay, God, now what do I do? I'm broken. I'm wounded. I want to give up. He came that night. He came that night in a new way. He climbed in that rocking chair with me, and for the first time, I knew that he loved me. That experience set me on a whole new journey. The comforter is real. He loves, to com he loves to comfort. He loves to rebuild lives. So um, I'm going to close. I've got a couple pages of thoughts on closing, but I'm not going to use them. You need to know that walking with the Spirit is fun. Take a deep breath. You actually know match for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but Donnie... I grieve him. No, you can't grieve the Holy Spirit. Take a risk this week. Talk with him about something that's bugging you. Journal about it. Ask him for more faith. Ask him for a closer walk. Get over yourself. It's okay to be broken. It's okay to be wounded. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be authentic. Does that mean I air my dirty laundry? No, but I can with Holy Spirit. So my challenge for you today, I had some great feedback last night, so if you have some feedback, come and talk with us afterward. Just ask him for a closer walk. By the way, he wants you to grab his nail-scarred hand and walk with him on the road, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you're good. Thank you that you're awesome. Thank you that you enjoy walking with us, even on our worst day. Lord, I pray that each one of us might grow in our fellowship with you, our friendship with you, our walk with you. Thank you that you're in our midst. Thank you that you're in the waiting. We ask all these things and we pray them all in Jesus' name. Amen.